Coffee is, is the second most traded commodity after oil. But socially and ecologically, it still represents um, uh, a big chunk of Guatemala's economy, Guatemala's social network, and biodiversity sustainability as well. And recent outbreaks of, of pest infestations linked with the low prices currently in the market have put more pressure on the coffee farmers now. And the Beatles are going to attack your coffee again. Just yeah. to add how this connects also to that price. Mm -hmm. If there's too many of this, the price goes low. Mm -hmm. It was really eye-opening to look at um, how many communities were really on the razor edge of not having enough water by the end of the dry season. Like literally not having enough water. Their crops, the food they were going to feed their families or the food that they counted on to sell to have money to buy the things they needed, how this depended so very narrowly and so very particularly on the climate of that year. Most of Guatemala is rain-fed agriculture. Coffee, sugar cane, all the vegetables we produce, they are entirely related to precipitation. Every time we have a drought, it hits these populations really hard. Millions of people are in this vulnerable state where climate variability, let alone climate change, challenges their livelihood, sure, but it reflects a larger challenge. And people in agriculture are tied so tightly to the timing and the amount of rainfall that, that comes during the, the wet season. And there's not much paleoclimate work at the timescales that, that might help inform agriculture over years to decades. So what we're trying to do is, is fill this really rather large and really serious gap in, in our knowledge about the climate system. And then better policy, better management, better planning will come with better information. The current coffee leaf rust crisis in Central America has been linked to an increase in temperature. If I grab this and touch this coffee plant, it's transmitted that way too. And we are bringing now this historical record on precipitation to to try to understand those connections and, and try to manage better the risk so the communities can be better prepared. Here in Guatemala, they're looking at where to plant coffee and then asking very specific local research questions is going to, to make a much broader range of information available to these communities and, and to Guatemala and to Honduras and to Central America in general. And then each stakeholder and each government and each community will hopefully be able to draw some information that's useful for that. You know, this stuff is happening. We are facing droughts and we're facing more extreme precipitation events. The fact that we're bringing climate information to them allows them to better manage this risk. So if you have this connection between climate uh, prices and pest infestations, then that improves their ability to su succeed.